Hey, welcome back my favorite students. Today we're talking about axial elongation. We're talking about, we just did this in the last video, right? Delta equals PL over AE. Let's see what they want to do today. We got a little problem here. It says find the displacement of point E, B, and C. Where is E, B, and C? E, B, and C. Uh, doesn't E and B, wouldn't they be the same amount? No, because that is also going to stretch, isn't it? So it's going to displace plus stretch. Uh, and then we have rigid bar CED, which is this guy, and rigid bar AB. I know it's solids. Our stuff is supposed to bend. But when you see the word rigid bar, that means there's no deflection, no stretching. It's a magic bar, okay? Um, uh, they're made from A36 steel, okay? So these, these two links are made from A36 steel, which is link EB and uh, what are you going to call that guy? Uh, A, B, C, D, E, F. We'll call him F. Okay? And they have a diameter, a dia that means diameter, right, of 25 millimeters. So step one, you know what we got to do step one? We've got to do some statics here, don't we? And this is like got a pin connection, a pin connection, and then this is really a two-force member, isn't it? That's a two-force member as well. Remember what a two-force member is? Pin connected at both ends, no forces in the middle. That's what those two guys are. I can't solve this, so you remember way back to statics how to solve this kind of problem? This was called a frame problem, right? We've got to take this thing apart and draw a free body diagram of the piece parts because what we want to do is we want to know what is the force in this member and what is the force in that member due to that five kip load down there. So let's draw us a couple of free body diagrams, okay? And that would consist of those two bars. There's one and there's one. Okay, so let's see. Let's put some, uh, some forces on here. What do we have? Okay. At point A, here's point A. Okay, at A, I have a pin connection. Right here in the middle, I have five kips. And then over here at this end, that's a two-force member, isn't it? So what do we think here? That, that guy is going to be pulling on me, right? So I'm going to call that guy uh, FEB. So that's one of the things that I, I need, is I need to know what that, that's going to be easy, isn't it? This is a Y, this is a X, this goes like this, and he's equal to zero. This, let's see, that, so if, if I take a mental moment here, that guy rotates me uh, anti-clockwise, so this guy needs to rotate me clockwise. And then over here on this guy, I got a pin connection, okay, and this is a... Uh, dy dx and then i've got the other end of that link right which is going to be pulling down over here remember if it goes up on one free body it has to go down on the next free body and then i've got this link over here right and is he in tension or is he in compression i think he's going to be in tension right so i think he's going to be pulling that's what a tension member looks like that's f c f See, and you said you weren't ever going to use statics again. dx equals to zero. And then dy, let's see, that guy rotates me clockwise, so this guy needs to rotate me anti-clockwise. Okay, piece of cake, right? We got to do, I think it's easy. Uh, and the thing I'm looking for is I'm looking for the force in these two members because what I'm going to do is I want to know what is the stretch in that member and what is the stretch in that member. And I'm going to use this equation here. So I need to know what is the force in that member. The length is given, right? Two feet over there, one and a half feet over here. Uh, the cross-sectional area, I can, I can calculate that from that diameter. And then E, the modular elasticity is a look them up. I can look that up in the back of my book in my material table because I know it's made out of A36 steel. So I need... The force FEB, and I need the force FCF. Let's do it, okay? I'm going to do this one down here first by doing, you know it, the sum of the moments at A, okay? And what do we get here? If I take the sum of the moments at A, 
uh, I got 5 which rotates me negative, so minus 5 times how far away from A, it's 6 feet, okay? And then this guy rotates me positive, so plus FEB times how far away from A, 12 feet, okay? Um, let's see. I can divide both by 6, can I? Whoop, whoop, that turns into a 2. And so move the 5 to the other side and divide it by 2. FEB equals 2.5 kips, okay? So this guy, 2.5 kips. Now I'll tell you what I'll do, because I'm going to need the room here in just a second. I'm going to put that right here. Oh, I'm going to put it in red, okay? So this guy... 2.5 kips, okay? Which means that this guy is 2.5 kips. So, let's take the moment on this free body about point D. And that will get us this FCF over here, won't it? So first I have this FEB which rotates me positive, uh, which is 2.5 times how far away, two feet, and then minus <clears throat> FCF times how far away is that guy from, from point D, 10, okay? So 2.5 times two is five, divided by 10 is 0.5 kips equals FCF. Okay, so this guy over here, 0.5 kips. And what's a kip? A kilopound, a thousand pounds, right? Okay, so look at there. And you said you weren't ever going to use statics again. We had to use statics to do step one. Let's erase this and do the next step. All right, so let's do the next step, which is let's find the stretch in these rods. Now, for the sharp of you out there, you'll notice that I had English units up here, but I had millimeters down there. I just changed that. Dad gum it. I changed it to a quarter of an inch diameter instead of 25 millimeters. That's going to make this problem a little bit better, okay? So they're a quarter inch diameter. Let's find out how much they stretch by using this equation here, okay? So let's find... Delta for, what is this guy? That's CF. CF equals PL over AE. Okay, and so what do we have here? P, we found that, 0.5 kips. 0.5 kips times L, 2 feet, but let's make it into inches. That's 24 inches, right? Okay, divided by A, Okay, here's this is the diameter, so I'm going to do pi r squared. So pi times uh, 0.125 squared. What? Oh, yeah, that's the radius, isn't it? Okay, times e, and if we look e up in the back of the book, right, here's our book. You've got to go to the, to the U.S. customary units here, okay? You're going to go to A36 steel, read across. E is 29 times 10 to the 3, don't forget about that, KSI. So 29, 1, 2, 3, uh, kips per inch squared. Okay, so inches squared cancel out. Uh, kips on bottom, kips on top. So what am I left with? Inches. That's good. Okay, so... Uh, delta CF is going to be equal to, here we go, 0.5 of 24 is 12, right? So 12 divided by pi equals, divided by 0.125 squared equals, divided by 29, 1, 2, 3 equals, okay? Point zero zero eight. Four to nine, okay, and that's inches. So that's how far CF is going to be stretched. That's how far this guy is going to stretch, which tells me how far down point C is going to go. 
How big is that? Okay. If you pulled one of your hairs out and you put a mic on that and you measured the diameter of a human hair, it's about 0 .007 to 0 .008. So that that just the magnitude of that is about the the width of a human hair. Okay, so it's not a lot, is it? Okay. What about the stretch in this guy? That's EB. So delta EB equals same thing PL over AE. Okay. Well, P for this guy is 2.5 kips. Okay, L is uh, one and a half feet, which is uh, what, 18 inches? Okay. Divided by the same A, pi times 0.125 squared, times the same E, 29,000. Okay, so delta EB is equal to, how much is that? 2.5 times 18 equals divided by pi equals divided by 0.125 squared equals, and then divided by 29123 equals, ooh, 0 0.03161, okay? So that's about 31 thousandths of an inch where this was 8 thousandths of an inch, okay? So this one's gonna deflect uh, quite a bit more than the other one, right? Almost four times as much, why? Well, number one, it's uh, it's got a lot more load on it, right? It's got five times the load on it, doesn't it? Okay, so we know how much they're gonna deflect. So the problem says, um, find the displacement of each point, okay? So each point is gonna move down. Okay, so, and here's how we can do that. So this bar here is gonna be down here, isn't it? Okay, so this point here is gonna drop some. And you know what we can do? We can use a little similar triangle here, right? So we've got this similar triangle that looks like this. Okay, do we know how much this thing is gonna drop over here on this end? Yes, that much right there. Point zero zero eight four two nine. Okay, and we want to know how much this little guy over here is going to drop. Well, this is 2, this is 8, so we could do this, couldn't we? Um, 10 is to 0 0.008429 as 2 is to y. We'll call this little value right here y, okay? So what does y equal? It equals, um, let's see, 0 0.008429 times 2 divided by 10. Point zero zero one six eight five eight. Okay. And what is that? That's the displacement of point E. Boop. Point E is going to move down that far, right? This is displacement of E, okay? The displacement of C, right? Displacement of C is this. Displacement of C is equal to 0 0.008429 downwards, right? We could do this downwards, downwards, okay? And we got one more, and what is the displacement of point B? Well, displacement of point B is this little distance here, which is that, plus the amount that it's gonna stretch, which is that, right? So, um, displacement of point B downwards is gonna be equal to, here we go, um, point zero three one six one. That's this guy, plus that guy, right? So plus point zero zero one eight five eight equals. Well, that point is going to displace down point zero three three four six eight inches. Okay. 
So there you go. There's a point E, C, and B. Is that all he asks us about? E, C, and B. Yes. Okay. So does it make sense? We had a little statics problem. We got a little axial elongation, right? And then we had a little similar triangles to find out how much those, those points displaced. So hope that makes sense. And I'll see you on the next video.